Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for Chick Digital's webinar series, Operating in the Time of COVID-19, Hotel and Resort Operations Best Practices. Today's webinar will be dealing with business planning and operating in the next normal. I'd like to introduce your co-moderators for today. We have Nicole Wynn and Sylvia Okutsi, both with CBRE, who will be moderating our panel, which comprised of Jeff Hislop of Invest Hotels, and Laura Pelota of Marriott International. I'd like to turn it over to your co-moderators today, Nicole and Sylvia. Thank you, Stephanie, and good afternoon, everyone. Nicole and I are pleased to welcome you to the second webinar in the CHIP Digital Best Practices series. It's been three weeks since our first webinar on cleaning and sanitization, and while there's been some positive movement in the direction of reopening economies, there have been some setbacks as well making it all the more difficult to determine when hotels across the country will see more travelers. One bright spot was the announcement on Sunday from the federal government pledging upward of $70 million toward tourism marketing efforts and encouraging Canadians to travel domestically. This is a great step and hopefully will encourage Canadians to get out and visit parts of their own country this year. In the meantime, industry experts like Laura Pallotta and Jeff Hislop are working hard to prepare their hotels for when travelers return, and determining new ways to provide guests with the confidence to stay in our hotels across the country. This afternoon, we're gonna focus the conversation around how sales and marketing may change in the wake of COVID-19, what managing the business in the short and long term looks like, and how innovation may need to accelerate in order to adapt to these changes. We have Laura Pallotta, the Vice President of Sales and Distribution for Marriott Hotels, along with Jeff Hislop, the Senior Vice President Asset Management for Invest Hotels with us today. These two industry professionals have a wealth of experience and are going to share their insight into what their respective companies and hotels are doing to adapt and respond thoughtfully in preparation for guests. It is likely that at least in the short to midterm, guests will not only be traveling differently, but will experience staying at hotels in a different way as well. It is clear from some of the data out of the US that once markets reopen, there is a level of pent up demand Early information suggests that in a number of Florida and Texas beach markets, weekend occupancies in recent weeks have been above 80%. Adding to that, the results of the Conference Board of Canada's Summer Travel Intention Survey and a recent Destination Canada uh, sentiment survey demonstrate that Canadians are cautiously looking forward to traveling close to home and that operators are looking ahead to welcoming back their guests into their communities in a safe and responsible manner. We hope that the discussions such as this one this afternoon will help operators prepare how to welcome these guests back. Jeff and Laura, maybe to get us started, you could each give us a bit of background about your role and the company you work with. Laura? Sure, good afternoon and good morning to everyone. I'm very pleased to be a part um, of this webinar. Um, I'm Laura Pallotta, I'm the Vice President of Sales and Distribution for Marriott Hotels of Canada. Uh, Marriott has 250 hotels uh, in Canada currently. We have about 23 of Marriott's 30 brands represented. Um, I, my job day to day is I have oversight for the sales organization. Uh, I run an above property um, uh, Canada account sales organization that handles our mid-market accounts. We have a Canadian sales office, which is a um, reactive booking center of, uh, oh, you know, 100 associates in that group, and as well as the on property sales team. So I'm very pleased to talk to you all. I'm very happy uh, to be talking about restarting um, the work that's going on now, finally. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Hislop, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Asset Management for Invest Hotels. Uh, Invest is uh, one of the largest hotel owners in Canada. We have uh, over eight, we have 81 hotels with over 10,000 rooms uh, from coast to coast, from PEI to Vancouver. Um, we also have a lot of diversity in the types of assets we own. Uh, we own everything from Comfort Inns, or the largest uh, franchise or of Comfort Inns, uh, to the St. Regis in Toronto, uh, and pretty well everything in between. So. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, COVID has hit us hard, like uh, like everyone. Uh, but uh, in the last uh, last month, we definitely started to see some more encouraging signs. At uh, bottom, we closed 25 of our hotels, uh, and we've since reopened 12 of them. So uh, we are we are seeing occupancies improve, particularly in the secondary and tertiary markets. Uh, the city center hotels are still, uh, you know, a challenge uh, at this point in time. 
um, but we are seeing seeing some improvement in occupancy. Thanks. Um, maybe, Laura, if you can kick us off, I think in, in this environment, it's clear that it's not business as usual and there's things that maybe in the medium term um, or even the long term that'll change the way we market and sell hotels. Um, can you talk about maybe the key aspects of things you're seeing change in the immediate um, as we move into recovery and perhaps over a longer term as we get into a more normal mode? Sure. Um, well, Nicole, currently uh, we are, as always, very committed to providing um, the best guest experience and atmosphere possible. Uh, and well, we have to address the unique concerns that are going on at this time. So, you know, with that, we're really evaluating this new normal. What does this mean? How does it impact every touch point from sales right through to operations? Um, you know, for 93 years, Marriott has been recognized as a hospitality leader. It's, our, you know, our commitment to quality, exacting standards, uh, rigorous training, all very important to us. So uh, I think you heard that we elevated, um, um, you know, on how we're managing our cleanliness protocols. And in fact, we launched a um, a cleanliness global cleanliness council back in April. So that's really about enhancing our cleaning standards and carrying out all of the, you know, much more higher frequency of disinfecting protocols um, throughout the hotel. So, you know, uh, lots of examples like, you know, adding signage and barriers and spacing out furniture so that we can, we can manage social distancing. So we're going to continue to innovate there. That's the current. Um, you know, right now we have been up to now welcoming guests from uh, healthcare fields, first responders and such. Uh, as soon as this uh, health crisis occurred, we, we kicked off a caregiver program. Um, and, uh, you know, our sales efforts at the time were just really spreading the message about that. Um, and then just recently, we actually uh, just launched a partnership with the Royal Bank of Canada um, to provide thousands of room nights uh, to hospitals across the country. So now as we move into um, recovery mode, thankfully, we're getting closer now, um, and travel begins to start to recover, we do anticipate our leisure travel to start first. Uh, that's what we have heard around the world, and in, in China in particular, and also in, um, in the United States, um, you know, followed by some business travel, um, and then uh, eventually group. Um, you know, the trends that we see now, everyone's just wanting to break out. They want to get to the mountains and, and to parks and they want to just get fresh air and, and spend time there, you know, outside of their homes. So we're doing a lot of work, um, you know, at, with our resorts right now. Um, you know, the other thing that's really Im important that, and, you know, this is the Zoom call that we're on today is one example of that is everyone's embracing um, you know, technology more, particularly mobile technology. So uh, right now about 3,200 of our 7,500 hotels worldwide have, um, you know, mobile check-in. Um, so we will endeavor to get the balance of our hotels up as quickly as, as possible. That's going to be a really important part. And then we're going to do things like leverage, um, you know, um, our distribution channel, Marriott.com, of course, first and foremost. And of course, our relationship with, with our Bonvoy um, loyalty members to really re reach our customers. Um, you know, just in terms of what's going next, um, we do, you know, it's expected that traditional group business is going to recover more slowly. Um, than other uh, segments. So we, and we, you know, we really know that is very much tied to, you know, the easing of travel restrictions um, and size of group and that. So we're very attentive there. Um, and we know that moving forward, where we may see some shifts in the size and format of events. And we have to, you know, make sure that we're addressing that with technologies as well. You know, mobile check-in is one of them, mobile chat, our Marriott meetings app. Those are all going to be really important because we've heard about virtual meetings uh, and, you know, but it's also how we, you know, virtual registration for meetings, hybrid uh, meetings, uh, you know, what is the, te the, the, you know, the technology, audiovisual technology look like for that. So those are all the things that we are all deliberating on right now and planning for. Great. Um, and Jeff, maybe, I don't know if you have, you obviously have a, a number of brands under your purview, but what kind of, what kind of changes have you guys seen or, or do you anticipate on, on marketing and selling your assets? Sure. So, I mean, right out the gates, it was all about staying connected with our communities and our customers. And we saw a lot of very innovative campaigns come out with uh, hotels or restaurants sharing their secret recipes in order for uh, customers to, to stay engaged with that asset uh, from home. Um, so that, you know, 
there's a lot we had the you know the hearts uh, messaging on a lot of the hotels uh, to, to tell the community that we care and we want to support them through these challenging times that was the first phase and uh, and then we move into what I'll call um, you know everybody sort of focus on the on the sanitization message and cleanliness to give them confidence to travel again and we're seeing this from all brands every brand is you know, engaged with, uh, you know, hospital sanitation experts and, and eco lab or suppliers of, uh, of chemical products to come out and talk about uh, what they're doing to keep, keep their guests and employees safe. So that, that's certainly been the current message. And next, you know, uh, as we move into, into interprovincial travel trends, I think Laura mentioned leisure is sort of going to be the first one back. Um, you know, it's about, it's about messaging uh, and keeping our, our marketing campaigns uh, geo-targeted. I'm hearing about a two-hour drive right now is, is the trend in terms of how far people are, are, are willing to travel within province. Uh, and you have to, to balance the messaging from the public health as well. You know, it, it's one thing to throw a lot of money at marketing, but if the public health officials are saying don't come or the borders have checkpoints, then, you know, there's no point throwing good money after bad. So you have to be very targeted in, in that messaging and wise with, uh, with your marketing spending coming in, coming out of this uh, recovery. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess from a corporate and government perspective, Jeff, as it relates to perhaps near term changes, how are you approaching the upcoming RFP season? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, it's early, early days uh, on that. What we're hearing uh, to date is the big, the big questions are, I mean, the travel managers want to know how we're going to keep their travelers safe, first and foremost. So that's been, uh, you know, we have to be prepared to respond on that. And I think all, all the brands uh, are doing an excellent job in, in arming, arming the operations and the sales, sales teams with the messaging to, uh, to, to arm them for those discussions. Um, yeah, a lot of the, uh, what, I, what I've heard is a lot, a lot of the strategies try to hold the line on programs, so try to hold, hold rates to last year's numbers, and in return, relax maybe uh, uh, in terms of production parameters. Obviously, there's not going to be as much travel from certain, certain companies, and so I think there's a bit of give and take there. So, you know, hold the, hold the line on rates and, uh, and uh, ease uh, production parameters. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's important. I mean, our costs are going to be are going to be increasing. We have uh, holdover requirements now, and you know, we don't believe lower rates are going to spur any additional demand. Um, and uh, and so, you know, we're we're taking taking the position to to hold uh, rates uh, wherever we can on the, on the corporate side for sure. I think it's important too that we're all going to see national average rates drop. Uh, we're going to see the you know the star reports come out and. You know, there's no reason for panic because it's simply it's a shift in segmentation. We don't have high rated international travel coming in. We don't have uh, the same uh, high, high rated group coming in. And there's also a shift in the types of assets that are going to recover. You're going to be having secondary and tertiary uh, markets and hotels recover before you have the urban center higher rated assets recover. And so, you know, the key thing is when people see those star reports come out and national ADRs are down 25, 30%, uh, there's no reason to panic uh, over that. It's not specific to segments. It's just a, the, the blend of those, of those segments. Right. Yeah, no, we, 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 we echo that uh, 100%. Uh, Laura, are, are, is Marriott sort of seeing the same from, from the RFP standpoint? In terms yes, of yeah, absolutely. We are, um, you know, we, we have heard from our customers uh, through uh, the advisement of the Global Business Travel Association that we, we do want to forego the 2021 RFP um, pricing process uh, and hold rates flat uh, to 2020. Um, you know, we have, We've had, you know, a lot of discussions with our customers, our owners, our hotel teams, and it, that is the consistent feedback. Um, with limiting staffing that's currently available across our customers and their travel management companies, it's not, it's not, you know, foreseeable that we could be actually execute a proper RFP uh, process, you know, and then the back half of the year. So, uh, you know, and, and of course for, for Marriott, uh, the ability to hold rates flat uh, in 21 to, you know, to 20 is a favorable outcome for sure. Um, we've got um, economic issues we're dealing with, ADR trends and labor shortages in general. So I think we're both the customer as well as the hotel companies being able to save that labor and focus on other things I think is really important. And I, and I like what Jeff talked about in terms of examining the data very closely. Um, we've all learned to really embrace data 
um, you know, at every turn. And given year over year data is, is not very, uh, you know, helpful right now, we do have to be looking at, um, we have to be looking and examining very closely what we're seeing in these uh, recent trends and also compare to them what we're hearing about other parts of the world and be able to understand that. So I think no knee jerk uh, decisions here uh, at all. We won't belabor the topic because I, I think you and Jeff have done a great job kind of covering this off, but we're, we're at pricing and, and certainly we acknowledge, um, you know, that that absolutely some of the pricing or, or the lack of pricing integrity right now is down to just what's open, what's available, but also most importantly, the sources of demand that are out there today um, in this situation. But I guess as you look over the longer term, um, do you expect to see a lot of sensitivity on pricing? Um, across all segments and are you expecting to see I guess more cross chain scale competition for for certain accounts or certain types of business Laura maybe I'll, I'll throw yeah. that to you to start I mean listen COVID-19 has had we all know a, an un unprecedented impact on the state of our industry uh, and as I said and we, we've been talking about data we have to look at understand so we can build the path forward uh, we anticipate large group business to come back rather slowly um, but we are starting to see slow and steady increases in bookings. And, and that's the same trend that we have heard about in China and now seeing that in the United States. But our data does not show, that, you know, it really it's important that lowering both transient and group rates are not going to change the current buying behavior of, of our guests. They're, our guests, as Jeff mentioned earlier, are focused on cleanliness and standards that they can trust. Um, we know that our guests are looking um, for flexibility more than ever when it comes to booking, just so that they have some reassurances. Um, so, you know, with that, we've adjusted our, our cancellation policies as we're talking to our customers about rebooking group and, and thinking about the future. We, have, we, we remain flexible. We're, we're, you know, that's the last thing we want to do is, is to, to break down any of the confidence that we have built um, over the long term, but certainly over the short term as we've been working through these cleanliness. So, um, you know, there's going to be some markets that are going to come back uh, more quickly than others. Um, the border closure is going to be uh, is a big concern for us right now, and that's going to in terms of restarting the economy in that in that way. So, um, but I will say just in general, um, uh, you know, our Canadian hotels in every province in Canada have have provided great value uh, relative to their competitors in other countries. So we need to hold on to that. Uh, we have built a great brand, the Canada brand, uh, in the in the travel space. Um, so I think really what's really important right now is that as an industry, uh, more than ever, we have to work very closely together um, so that we can really ensure, um, you know, our mutual success. Yeah. Um, Laura, this one is uh, it's a participant question that came in ahead of time. Um, and it's still along the veins of sales and marketing, but we're, we're going to shift a little bit. This one, um, the question is, social media is generally occupied with a fun and unique experience. Now we're looking at a safe place to stay. How do you see the role of social media evolving in this new, new norm? Well, listen, thank goodness. Thank goodness for social media over the last 12 weeks. Um, and uh, it's been a connector for, for so many people uh, in so many ways. Um, and we've seen that certainly with um, the uh, events of, of, of the last week. Um, but I will say that, um, you know, you've noticed, noticed our, with Marriott social media accounts, we have been silent uh, at the beginning for a period of time. It, it certainly wasn't appropriate to be there. Um, and then, uh, then slowly, as Jeff had mentioned, you know, we started to see, uh, you know, photos of, uh, you know, our hotels illuminating uh, in support of love and messages of hope. Um, and that will, you know, that has continued on. You know, it's, it's kind of cool because what, what it started out as a, this organic trend just spread to hotels all over the world and, and, and every brand, which I think is, has been a real connector. Um, you know, it's going to be, social media is going to be more important than ever. Um, we've used, you know, we we started to use our channels just with we we will travel again campaign, that was very powerful. We we got great feedback from that, um, and then you know it's going to play an important role. I think when you think about um, you know talking about uh, hotels that are reopening and the, and these protocols that we've been discussing, and then eventually um, we are going to see more promotional tactics happening. It's just it's a it's a wonderful way of of depicting imagery and and content in a way that that's uh, succinct. Um, it's got a great uh, speed to market. 
um, and a low cost, uh, relatively speaking. And it's great, it's two-way communication. It allows us to talk to our customers and get their feedback and, you know, and get um, and understand what's important to them. So I think, you know, we're gonna see more and more of that. Um, uh, I think, I know we have opened up um, ourselves a little bit more on social media. We're, we're being very cautious. We are watching sentiment. It is important, we have to balance all of that. But um, I do, I am excited about, um, you know, what those channels will bring uh, and continue to bring in the future. Yeah. Jeff, are you, are you your hotel seeing, are, are utilizing social media um, more or less differently? Yeah, no, absolutely we are. I mean, right, uh, you know, up, up to now, it's been really about keeping engaged with the community, as I mentioned. Um, you know, I think, you know, as we move into the next phase, we're trying to get, you know, local, local interprovincial travel. You know, it's about the messaging uh, about, you know, maybe open spaces, which attractions are open in your local market. You know, if you're a hotel north of Toronto that used to market yourself as, you know, close to Canada's Wonderland, now you need to focus and shift your messaging on, you know, the local Port right, you know, conservation area that's open and so come, come and visit. And, and so I think, you know, the ability to pivot and adapt the message through social media is definitely, a, you know, an appropriate, appropriate way to do that. Um, one, of, one of my favorite ones that, uh, that, that's out there, I don't know if everyone's seen it, is the one that Banff Springs did. It's not one of our properties, but uh, it's uh, called the Bellhop, The Art of Waiting. And I think it was a great example of, you know, keeping that engagement with, with the community in a very sort of clever uh, a tactful uh, way in this environment. So I think we'll, we'll see, we'll see, you know, more and more of that innovation come out here over the coming, coming months. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great examples. Yeah. Um, we'll switch gears a little bit and maybe kind of veer towards operations and, and how things are changing over the next little bit. Um, and, and this is a bit of a sales and marketing question. So um, we'll start, Laura, maybe if you can talk a little bit about what kind of, uh, I guess, mid to long term bookings are you seeing and, and what, it, what interesting things maybe have come out of the discussions as somebody's looking to book something that's maybe two or three or four years out. You know, are they making really specific requests, expanded cancellations, you know, other things, F&B flexibility? How are, how are those discussions proceeding right now? Yeah, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, uh, our customers very much want to see, they see, they have, they see the value of face-to-face -face meetings. We all do right now. I love my Zoom, uh, but there's nothing that replaces face-to-face -face meetings for collaboration, ideation, problem solving, business planning, all of those things. So they all want to resume when the time is right. We, we hosted a customer round table last week and, and that was unanimous. Um, in terms of booking for future years, um, our clients are cognizant of um, you know, the, the local health guidelines, you know, in every jurisdiction, the recommendations, and they're thinking about that as what will that look like in six months, 12 months, you know, beyond that. Um, and so we don't have yet full clarity, uh, of course, we're working very closely, um, you know, on that right now. Um, but we do, uh, you know, we do anticipate that will that our, our group bookings will will resume with some regularity, a uh, regularity uh, in 2021, we'll have some in 2020, they'll be small, um, yeah. arguably. Um, so, what, you know, what we are talking about right now, um, you know, is how, you know, how can we do meetings a bit differently, live streaming support, um, these touchless options that we talked about meeting our meeting services app, you know, um, you know, how we can have mobile chat, how we can be talking, you know, what is the whole experience from end to end for our meeting trial, you know, our meeting guests, uh, what does that look like? So we're working very closely, we're, we are talking, but we're listening. Uh, I think, you know, our customers have told us they are looking to the big brands uh, to provide guidance and support and help. And certainly Marriott has always wanted to be a leader in that and have been. So we will continue on that. Um, you know, we have to think about what is, how is that meeting experience and how will it be different and how do we need to think differently um, and, and about, about the, the touch points that are most important you know, um, and, and how meetings may take place. If you think about, I heard, you know, yesterday, the incentive business. Um, incentive is such an important, you know, for reward and recognition. Um, but perhaps, you know, they're incented and they come, but they're actually, and they are on their own individual trip um, for that. So we have to think and be just sort of out of the box, which I think is, which is, which is a positive uh, step. Yeah. And then Jeff, across your assets, uh, what are you seeing in this regard, people dealing with longer term uh, bookings? 
Yeah, I mean, we're we're definitely still still seeing them um, for for you know further out. I mean, this year there's uh, you know not not much for, till the end of the year. Next year, the big focus is sort of rebooking a lot of the groups that shifted into this year. Um, you know, everybody needs to keep in mind the big associations uh, live and breathe and survive off the groups that they host. So uh, they're you know a business too, and they need to get back to business at some point. So there is there is a focus, and we are still booking business uh, two to five years out uh, in our big uh, bigger group hotels, which is which is positive. Um, and you know, I think uh, we're going to see more and more of the brands give a very clear, specific. Uh, details around what they're doing for meetings. Accor came out with their uh, All Meet Well uh, campaign, I think it was last week, uh, which gave you know very specific direction around the touch points uh, when when we do have meetings. So it's all about creating that confidence and and being able to host uh, host groups at the at the hotels. Right. Yeah. Um, th this is a bit of a, a it's an occupancy type question. I think it's it's so unique. I mean, we're we're, we're in a really interesting time with COVID nineteen. But when we think about managing the business going forward, um, given that many of the brands have these new cleaning protocols, which require that rooms are hung for two or three days after guest checks out, and then you've got to go in before it's being cleaned. Um, what do you think the impact of this is is from a capacity limitation perspective going to have? Um, maybe 2021 and beyond, Jeff. Like I know this is yeah. an issue today because occupancies are still quite yeah. low, but looking forward. No, I mean today it's an easy give. I mean, given where occupancies are, I do think as we improve the technology uh, to to provide that sanitation. I mean, you know, the electrostatic. Uh, um, sprayers and uh, UV technology and training and practices. Uh, we're going to get better and better at this uh, over over the coming months, and uh, and then you know I do expect some of those stay over stand, uh, standards are going to tighten. Um, you know our business just wasn't built uh, to to operate at a thirty percent occupancy for for very long. So we're going to have to uh, find uh, find a way to means to keep our our guests and employees safe uh, through through technology and practice. Um, obviously, you know, during these restrictions, we have to be hyper focused on length of stay and ensuring we're pricing appropriately for length of stay. I mean, a one night stay or a one night group is going to be priced differently than a, a three night group. And I, I mean, it always, it always was, but you know, probably even more so now, just given, the, given the requirements and parameters around that, um, you know, uh, Laura, is, um, has Marriott or your team specifically given some thought to that in terms of perhaps pricing group or individual travel when, when we have to maybe consider capacity? Yeah, we, we haven't actually, I think in the near term, we believe we've got the capacity. Um, and, you know, we've been, we've been thinking about how do we manage next year. Uh, and I think that's still underway. I mean, I think the, op the, the ability to operate with flex flexibility um, is business critical. And I think these are all of the things that everybody's in deliberating. And we've certainly got ideas about how to manage that. Um, and we need to be adaptable. So, um, you know, there's going to be lots of things as long as long we go, uh, you know, we, we've got time. We've got time now to plan. No doubt. Um, I'll, I'll ask this question to Jeff, but, you know, I, there's, a, there's a quote that I'm super fond of from Warren Bennis, who, you know, is, is a pioneer in kind of contemporary leadership studies. And he's always said, you know, in life change is inevitable, in business change is vital. Um, the hotel industry in Canada and around the world is in a period of really significant challenges brought on by this pandemic. Um, and the consensus seems to be that it'll be a slow recovery. So um, in the spirit, I guess, of that, of that quote, um, maybe can you hypothesize a little bit about, you know, maybe where you think some changes will be necessary as the industry works towards recovery, um, things that you, might, you think we might see um, change maybe semi-permanently or permanently? Right. Yeah, I mean, sure. There's going to be inevitable changes. Uh, you know, we are we are in a business, so we need to make sure we align resources with demand, and, and that's the that's uh, the reality of what what we face as as managers today. Um, hospitality people, we've always been um, you know very cross functional in the way we do business, and so I think there's just going to be more uh, focus on uh, adapting, uh, especially in the short term when we have low occupancies. We're going to be, need to be more. Um, you know, uh, cross-functional in, in the way we uh, in the way we operate. Uh, you know, we may have 
people that used to be, you know, in banquets, you know, doing other things like temperature checks at doors or hand, handing out prepackaged breakfast kits. So there's going to be some adaption required within the operation in order to, to keep these hotels uh, uh, running. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I don't, you know, I don't like the, the term new normal. It's going around a lot. I, I, I for one think, you know, this is going to be a slow recovery. I agree. Uh, it's a few years to come, but we will, the industry will, uh, you know, at some point get back to, uh, back to where we were. We, we've been through many crises before, although this one, this one is particularly bad, but I do, I do think we'll rebound, but you know, some of the, the lasting changes I think that I could see come out of this, uh, you know, Laura mentioned, you know, keyless check-in. I think, you know, this is going to be the time now where customers actually start, you know, focusing on that. They're going to download the apps. They're going to learn how to use it. Uh, you know, the operators are going to are going to do the same. And so, you know, I think, you know, that's a win for us. I mean, those RFID cards, I think, are about 70 cents each. So if we can get more people using, uh, using their iPhones, that'd be great. Uh, you know, maybe some of the stuff we pulled out of guest rooms aren't going to be put back. Uh, you know, there's a lot of collateral and, you know, stuff in the rooms that, that have come out. So, uh, so, you know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, all of it won't, won't creep its way back. You know, and, and la you know, last, one of the unfortunate things, um, you know, our industry is in a great uh, quest to transition away from single use plastics. I can talk to Invest in particular. You know, we had uh, plans to put bulk dispensers in uh, across almost all our properties. Uh, even in our comfort ends, we were installing dishwashers to get rid of, you know, the plastic plates and dishes uh, in the in the breakfast rooms. Um, you know, it was a big, you know, big area of importance for us. I think, you know, there's gonna be a bit of a setback on that um, for the next few years. Uh, but eventually, uh, the environmental uh, approach, you know, will come back uh, once we can ensure the safety of our colleagues and guests. So. Yeah, Laura, I don't know if you have anything to, to add on that front, you know, things that you think might might be might be changing here as businesses look to adapt. Yeah, um, well, you know, there's so much going on right now, but I will, you know, what, what, from my perspective, um, you know, and Marriott, we've always focused our organization around the needs of our customers. Um, and if the customer's needs change, we will adapt and, and, and we'll go so far as to say we also want to be on the forefront of those changes so we can continue to be a trusted partner um, to those customers. Um, you know, on a personal note, you know, it, it, in the sales world, a few years ago, um, I did a big reorganization of our sales organization to make it easier for our customers to buy. And that was a very positive step um, and it yielded positive results. So we'll, we're going to continue to think about our customers and adapt and, you know, how we're managing and think about all of that, um, you know, essentially with their health and safety needs, but also about how they want their desire to travel and to meet again. So um, we're going to really leverage those relationships through our loyalty program and, you know, make sure we are continuing um, listening and, as I said, instilling that confidence uh, um, with them. Um, this is also a participant question that was submitted in advance. Um, when you think about Canada and, and where we are in terms of reopening, we are lagging some other regions and countries. Um, so Jeff, as we're looking to perhaps some of these other places that are reopening ahead of us, um, are, how are those successes and mistakes being used perhaps to guide best practices locally? Yeah, I mean, for, for us, we're, we're staying focused and close with all our brand partners. We have uh, over eight, uh, eight different brand partners who do have global operations. Invest is a domestic, uh, we have a domestic portfolio. So we're uh, talking to them, learning from them. Um, you know, we need, to, we need to understand where the successes and, and failures have been because this is all new for everybody. And, uh, and uh, so we've been, you know, leaning very, very heavily on our, on our brand partners through this. Great. Laura, from, from Marriott's perspective, obviously global, global reach. Are you guys looking at some of, of what's happening elsewhere to, to help dictate what happens here? Absolutely. Um, you know, we are, we are, we have being a global brand uh, with extensive uh, number of hotels in China and Asia, we are able to look at uh, and understand what's happening there. I participate on a weekly global leaders call with my counterparts to, you know, we can understand and best practices and share information. Uh, and we can compare every, you know, ourselves and where we're at in our cycle, because it is very different um, by region. Um, and it's really important, you know, a component in really deciding, you know, 
you know, it's, it's helped us decide when to open a hotel, reopen a hotel, um, you know, when it's right to market. So, um, you know, for example, right now, understanding the leisure travel customer and, you know, that that is recovering more quickly than others. Uh, we have learned a lot from China and what they have seen and heard. Um, you know, it's going to take longer, uh, as, we, as we talked about in city center, um, you know, local hotels, but we are getting best practices from other markets. Uh, and now we're getting the benefit of what, you know, understanding what's happening in the United States. Um, you know, just yesterday I'm hearing about, um, you know, in, in our uh, luxury hotels, um, you know, that, that suite sales are, are strong. Uh, people want to reconnect. They're getting together, back together with families. Things like birthday, social events, they need, they want to celebrate all the things that they've missed, graduations, all those kinds of things um, are happening, um, you know, in our hotels in the United States where, where they're, where they're um, able to travel to. So all of that um, we're taking into account, uh, obviously with social distancing protocols, the most safe way, but we're listening. And so that helps us to, uh, you know, put together our plans, our recovery strategy plans um, here in Canada. Great. Sorry, Jeff, you've touched on this a, a little bit. I'd like to come back to it just I think as we talk about innovation and, and the changes that are coming um, over the next little bit, you mentioned, you know, that you guys are maybe going to stop the program to install um, bulk, um, bulk amenities in, in your um, guest rooms. But are there other capital, you know, requirements or capital programs that you guys were looking at that are more along this innovation line or touchless, keyless entry, those kinds of things that you guys have actually maybe moved up, moved ahead in the schedule um, in light of everything that's going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're definitely looking at, uh, you know, trying to advance the mobile key installations where possible. Um, you know, so some brands are uh, ahead of others on that. So the ones uh, where we're ready to uh, install, we're, we're absolutely looking at, looking at uh, obviously uh, touchless um, faucets and, and public washrooms, things like that. Um, and so, so all that, there's obviously a lot of cleaning equipment required um, uh, for, for, you know, PP&E and, you know, the electrostatic sprayers and the UV. So, so all that we're, we're reviewing right now uh, on that front. A lot of the brands are, are, you know, slowly, gradually coming in with all their standard specs on a lot of that. So we've been anticipating that uh, so we can get, uh, get all that uh, deployed. Um, you know, one of the one of the other challenges we, we've been having a lot of discussions on. We have a few active projects. We have the Hilton and Quebec City and uh, the Holiday Inn in Kingston, both uh, well under construction. You know, with uh, expensive uh, buffet areas, and so you know, we, we've been having a lot of discussions on. Well, you know, buffets are going away. You know, we we should get rid of it and save the money. Which, um, you know, I guess my perspective on, as I mentioned earlier, I, I do think. COVID impact is temporary. It's not going to last forever, and we will see buffets again. That's that's you know generally my view. Um, but you know we're looking at things. Do we rough it in? Do we cap off the the power and everything so we we have extra space to space out seating uh, in restaurants, which we're going to need for a period of time within those buffet areas, and and then be ready to you know install them two years down the road when, when we're ready to, to put them back in. So those are the types of discussions we're having on all our projects. But I, you know, I don't, I, I certainly hope our hotels aren't going to look like hospitals forever. So we need to, we need to, to keep that in mind. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Laura, I don't know if you, you're talking with any of your other operators, at the Marriott branded properties of, of initiatives they are either pushing forward in, in this vein. Well, certainly, as we talked about mobile check-in, mobile key, very important. There is a, uh, a dramatic uh, focus on that. Now, we were already on, their, on our way, but it's now our owners, we've been talking to our owners about that. Everyone fully believes that how important it is. They, they see the value. So I think we'll be able to make those changes uh, very, you know, relatively quickly. Um, and just in additionally, the area of, of, of the meeting experience, you know, we're working with our audiovisual partners right now to think about, about, you know, what we need to be able to offer so that we, we know meetings will come back but you know in order to uh to take place they you know they may not be able to have some of some of their international um travelers come right now um or in the near future so we want to make sure that, that they can still have a fulsome meeting experience um that's you know that's very important to them we talked about the association segment uh, a few minutes ago that is very important to the association segment. So, you know, so the meeting in the meeting um, uh, experience is, is definitely another area of focus um, and how we can do that um, in a way that is also 
does not inhibit uh, the experience um, that really adds to it. Um, Jeff, you touched on this already a little bit in terms of F and B, um, but in keeping with the, the theme of innovation, uh, certainly full service hotels, resorts in particular, um, have of course a, a strong emphasis on F and B programming. So what do you, and, and, and it's a high guest contact area. So are there things or fundamental changes that you think that we might see here? Either, uh, either curt, like immediate and perhaps? Yeah. I mean, food and beverage, I, I do, again, believe uh, will will come back, uh, you know, once we get through this. But in the, in the short term, I mean, you know, smaller, smaller groups at the Firma McDonald, uh, which is a, a wed wedding hotel in Edmonton, for sure, we adapted our, our wedding package, we had a micro wedding package, and we booked 50, 50 of them this summer, uh, you know, up to 15 people. And so you've had to be reactive to that and provide you know, comfort uh, that we can we can do it. We can provide the the required social distancing. We're going to make use of outdoor spaces uh, more. If if you are lucky enough to have outdoor spaces available, you need to, to make sure you, you utilize them. Um, you know, some of the other things we're looking at. Uh, you know, Louis Louis, our restaurant at the Saint Regis, uh, when we reopen that, they're exploring. Uh, I miss that hotel, Jeff. I miss <laughs> that restaurant. Yeah, so do I, Laura. Thanks. Yeah, the uh, we're we're hoping to get that that reopened in in July if we're allowed. Uh, we'll we'll see. Um, the, uh, the hotels are uh, examples where maybe you can do like a family dinner within a guest room. So we adapt some of the suites. Uh, so then you come to Louis Louis, but in a room and you have your private space for your family to have a, a proper, you know, restaurant meal uh, in your own private space. So I thought that was a, a very innovative idea from the hotel team there. Um, we've done things like, uh, again, at the front of McDonald, we had for Mother's Day to keep that community engagement. Usually we have, you know, incredible Mother's Day brunches with 800 people uh, through multiple seatings. There they did, uh, uh, they did take out Mother's Day tea and we sold 550 uh, packages there. So, you know, we tried to, try to react to keep that engagement with the community uh, uh, alive uh, and, you know, food and beverage eventually will, will return when we get through this. So. Yeah. Laura, any um, Marriott specific examples or, or anything you want to add? Yeah, Jeff provided some great examples. Um, you know, modifying floor plans, really important. Uh, that's the work, self-serve, buffets eliminated, at least for now. We're working on the redesign of our food and beverage service in general, uh, but also in executive lounges and our M clubs, uh, because, and I, I was pleased to hear this week, our Sheraton Center Toronto uh, is moving forward with the renovation of their, of their M club. It's an important part of our guest experience. Um, but, you know, um, you know we're, we're just looking at every aspect in the short term, but also for the long term, because we know there, you know, we'll, there will be a vaccine uh, one day soon, hopefully, that uh, we'll be able to resume a lot of the way that we did things before. But, you know, with a, in a new way, I guess, um, is really important. Um, we heard examples, uh, United States recently, um, with their resuming travel you know, in-room dining was not as important to them, uh, that they've not had an uptick in in-room dining, that people still want to dine face to face and in whatever way we can, uh, they want that experience. So, um, so that was interesting because we didn't really know where that was going to land uh, in the short term. So yeah, just, uh, just being innovative, um, creative, I think is really important. And I was really, we've got a, our team is all working away at all of that. Um, and there's been some great examples um, out of Asia um, about how people can do and um, you know how, how can how they can dine and and have those experiences, have those special occasions in a way that still really creates um, happiness for people. That's great. Um, I'll get a, a maybe a final thought from each of you before we um, open it up for some more participant questions. Um, we wanted to leave you know as much time as we could at the end of the session today to do that. Um, you know we've we've talked a lot both on this session, previous webinars, other you know through other channels about the importance of you know social media, um, owners communicating, the importance of messaging. Um, but is that is that enough to get us there? Is is that enough um, for each hotel or each brand to be doing their own thing, or is or is there another approach we need to be taking? So maybe if each of you could give us you know your thought around that. 
I can go first, Nicole. Um, you know, I think it starts at, right at the beginning. It's certainly in the hotel segment that thoughtful, strategic property sales and marketing plans um, that are individualized to their marketplace, to their source market, very, very important. But beyond that, um, our, our, our sector really does need a long-term re recovery support. Um, I'm impressed that the work of the work that, you know, that the Hotel Association of Canada has done, that TIAC has done together with them. I'm, I'm pleased that we have the reallocation of that $70 million for Canadian tours and that, that it was announced this past weekend. Um, we do need to get Canadians traveling again uh, when the time is right. We need to op reopen those borders to the world. Um, so we are we're, we're at the table with stakeholders having those conversations, but we do have to influence our government folks at the provincial and the federal level. Um, but as I mentioned before, we really do need to work together closer than we ever have. Um, we are talking to DMOs and PMOs right now daily about what is your plan? How can we make sure we have alignment? And we're working across with airline and other segments that traditionally we haven't worked as closely with, to be perfectly honest, but we need to really get closer. Uh, and I think that's a positive outcome, I, I hope, um, from, from this work. Um, you know, I talked about the group limits. We do need to have a solution. Um, you know, right now, um, some of those decisions are happening without us being at the table. So I think we have to work harder and together um, around that. So, um, you know, I think really uh, it's important, these government standards, um, and we have to make sure that, um, you know, that we're working closely with these folks, but also we need to think about the fact that, um, that the government understands that you know, in order for our industry to survive, that capital is critical um, and not just additional debt uh, load, but really favorable terms and subsidies and forgiveness in some cases is going to be really required for our owners. I know we've got one of our biggest owners on this call, but um, that's also important to us as a brand because that's how we will continue to flourish and be able to recover from all of this because it has been enormous. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. And I, I definitely, definitely want to also uh, give a give a shout out. We're very fortunate to have Hack and Tyak uh, on our sides on this. I mean, Susie at Hack's done a great job of being a, a great, strong voice in Ottawa uh, for our industry. But, you know, as Laura mentioned, we, we need to be also focused locally, provincially to make sure, you know, uh, the state, the politicians, the stakeholders know our business is going to take a lot longer than most to recover. You know, when the barber shop reopens, there's going to be a lineup around the block and they're going to be right back uh, to prior demand levels. For us, you know, this is going to be a multi-year recovery. So we need to make sure they understand and appreciate that we are different. Our industry is going to be different. It's going to be a lot of slower recovery. And so we are going to need their support. Um, you know, uh, our, as Laura mentioned, our, D, our local DMOs, they, they need the budgets in order to pivot their marketing. They need to change their, their, their uh, campaigns and strategies, and that costs money. So we definitely need to make sure we're all talking to our local politicians and provincial politicians uh, and, and federal uh, to ensure we, we have that support. I think the other thing that's critically important is, you know, as we as we execute uh, the messaging to our guests on uh, our commitment to cleanliness and sanitation, we have to make sure we follow through and execute on that. And this isn't a, a Hyatt or a Hilton or Silverbird or an Invest thing. This is an industry thing. So if we don't follow through on that commitment, and you know. Lord help us, we have a marketplace investigator again that comes and does some investigation and finds gaps in, in that commitment. Um, you know, we, uh, we, you know we, we, we can't lose the confidence of our guests at this time. Uh, so we need to execute on our, province for, our, pro, our pro, promise to our associates and guests. So, so. Yeah, I, I, think th I think those are both very fair comments on both sides. It's, it'll be imperative that the industry kind of band together in, in a very different way than we have um, it coming out of any other previous um, event, uh, maybe we'll have to file follow in some way the airline's lead coming out of 9-11. There was a lot of, you know, change that had to happen immediately um, and everybody needed to kind of get on board with that. So, um, Sylvia, did you want me to start with a question from participants here and then we'll, we'll jump in. You, you can grab uh, another couple. We'll try and get, we have 12 minutes or so. We'll try and get through a few of these. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I'll ask the, a question that's, that's here from a participant, um, and, and I've actually heard this before. Um, you know, somebody uh, is just saying that, you know, they stayed at a, a downtown property 
um, you know, within the last week or so, um, and felt very comfortable that the cleaning and sanitization protocols were followed. Um, but some of what was missing maybe in this guest's experience was um, the hospitality and the welcomeness that they're used to. Um, you know, when and how I think do you see that coming back and, and maybe what's hindering a little bit of that right now? Jeff, I don't know if you want to start or Laura. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, we, we, we've definitely had to, to pivot to, well, there's a few, a few challenges. One is just the occupancy levels are lower, particularly in large hotels. You have these cavernous lobbies <laughs> cases with, with a lack of energy. Um, and that is a challenge for sure for the big, for the big boxes to overcome. And, you know, secondarily, we, you know, uh, had to uh, turn our, our, our uh, hotels into, into hospitals uh, like our like our offices and 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 everywhere else and that's a challenge it's it's, it's um, uncomfortable for for our business so I think you know innovation will always come out of our business I you know we have incredibly engaged associates and teams at the property level and I know there's going to be all kinds of innovation that are going to come out uh, over the coming months to overcome those challenges uh, and and it will, uh, we will figure out that balance uh, as, as we, as we get, get comfortable with, uh, with the situation we're in. Yeah. Um, another question that came in was, what about passing along to guests a surcharge to offset cleaning costs or just perhaps adding it to rate? It, yeah, I know. I, I've been I've been sort of talking, uh, advocating this uh, a little bit. We uh, uh, at the uh, one of our hotels, one of our airport hotels, who which stayed open during uh, during this process, the the hotel team did initiate a, a sanitization fee, um, and um, and I I thought I thought it was great. Uh, obviously, we have significant costs uh, to uh, to cover in this, we're starting to see some of this in the U.S. Uh, in the restaurant industry surcharges. Um, you know, in discussions with a lot of the brands, uh, we we have uh, reached out and had discussions, and I think the feedback is uh, is that you know, clean, cleanliness and sanitation is a, an expectation for our industry, and it's sort of just expected. And so, by you know, charging a surcharge uh, to have a clean uh, room, it probably doesn't send the right message uh, to to our guests, and so. You know, uh, the, the position a lot of the brands have taken on this is we need to, you know, hold, hold the line on rates and not, uh, and not uh, charge an additional surcharge. Um, but I, you know, I'm definitely still a little torn on this. I, you know, I, I, uh, I see, I, I can see both positions for sure. So. Yeah. I can add to that. Um, Marriott's point of view is a kind of a, what uh, Jeff alluded to um, in one way. Um, our, our belief is right now, you know, why we put together a global cleanliness council, why we're making these adjustments is we need to instill this confidence in our travelers that it's safe to travel again. And um, I think um, creating a surcharge uh, for that effort, that's not the right message to send. I think that we want to focus on, on getting them back to our hotels, using our outlets our, and enjoying our experiences. So I think right now there, we have no plans um, to, to instill those charges. We'll obviously continue to talk to our owners about everything, um, but I think at this point right now, we do not believe that's, that's the right message to send as we're restarting um, our businesses again. Great, okay, thanks Laura. Um, this question's come in, how are you planning to meet the staffing levels that will be required in the future? Um, I, I, I think the question is, is around, you know, right now you've had to sort of furlough and, and, and how do you sort of bring them back as demand, I guess, starts to pick up, you know, is there going to be a gap there? Um. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We're we're starting uh, starting a recall process on hotels uh, as we open them up, and you know, our our hope and desire is to get everybody everybody back to work as soon as we can. So that that absolutely is the objective. Uh, but uh, being a business, we need to align uh, resources with demand. So, um, you know, uh, we 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 want to get everyone back, but it's going to be it's going to be a gradual uh, a gradual uh, long term process, unfortunately. So. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. Um, you know, over, uh, there's another question here, just, um, 
you know, what protocols, I, I, I think we've talked a lot about cleaning guest rooms and this is kind of in that vein, but a little bit of a deviation. Um, what, it, what, it, what are you implementing, I guess, around linens, um, you know, pillows, actual, you know, soft goods, bedding, stuff like that? Have you had to really make big changes to the laundering or, or cleaning protocols with those goods in the guest room? I'm going to give that one to my friend Jeff. It's a little bit outside my lane. That, that, <laughs> you know, that, that's a great question. Uh, I, I, I have not heard of any uh, additional um, laundering requirements. I think, you know, the standards before COVID were, were very high on that regard. Uh, uh, but uh, I, will, I will follow up on that and, uh, and uh, post, uh, post uh, communication. We can certainly respond on that. Great. Um, we're just trying to go down the list here, make sure that we're addressing things that are, you know, obviously relevant to, to um, the topics that we're discussing. Um, there's a question about businesses that have become more comfortable with the idea of remote office. Um, if so, how will it shape the, 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 excuse me, shape the future of business travel? So, you know, will, will the trend continue where people are working remotely and how will that affect, you know, demand for, for hotels? Yeah, I think um, there's no question that it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, how things will change in the future. I, I have been talking to a lot of customers through our, our roundtables and just uh, individually. Um, and there, it, it, there's all sorts of thinking around that. I think, um, uh, I think there will be an impact uh, in the short term, um, but uh, on travel, just because of the safety um, protocols and, and sort of the rules and regulations. Um, and also because as they're, as they're reorganizing their businesses uh, relative to the subsequent um, economic issues that we felt faced because of the health crisis. Um, having said that, um, we are seeing um, consultants uh, who are getting back on the road now, uh, if they're not on the road, they're not billing, it's important to them um, to be touching their customers. Um, we, I think we will see, um, you know, uh, the importance of uh, regional travel um, at first. And I think, I mean, we've heard uh, that there's, there are businesses that need to get out and visit their sites. Um, maybe they might not be getting on a plane right now, but they're driving. In some cases, I heard from a customer last week, 12 hours, uh, just to make sure they're making that journey. So we really don't know yet. Um, I think the technology that we've embraced over the last 12 or so weeks is a positive um, trend, but we have heard time and time again how important it is for that face-to-face -face opportunity. So we'll see. Um, we're watching, we're listening, we're learning from what's happening in other parts of the world. We are hearing that business travel in addition to leisure travel is resuming in China. Um, we're hearing more about that. We're hearing about that in parts of the United States as it's starting back up again as well. So time will tell. Maybe, maybe just to add on that, uh, you know, one of, one of uh, our colleagues has a, a friend who works for Shopify and Shopify as I think everyone's heard is allowing this work from home policy. And so guess what? They're moving to Charlottetown. Uh, they used to be based in Toronto now to Charlottetown. And so I kind of wonder, you know, if companies do start evolving to allow this remote working, that actually could be a positive for business travel because that person that used to be in Toronto is in Charlottetown. It's probably still going to need to come into Toronto, you know, quarterly, monthly to, to do visits and come to come to corporate office. That may be, may be net positive for our business uh, potentially. And, and additional demand, if, if companies uh, shed uh, office space, maybe they're going to need more, uh, more group uh, meeting space to, to host uh, meetings. Right. So. Right. Okay. Um, um, go ahead, Nicole. No, I was going to just maybe try and pick one more here. I know that I saw um, Stephanie pop up there, which means she's coming to, she's coming to cut us off here in a second, but um, huh. maybe we'll do, we'll do one more if we can. Um, what what's your take on domestic leisure this summer since Canadians likely won't want to travel or won't maybe even be able to travel overseas? Well, I do think uh, if we if we look to the look south um, that I think people do want to travel. Certainly in my circle of Zoom friends, um, they're looking to understand, you know, how they can travel where. So I think interprovincial will be very important. 
Um, I know we're working very closely to understand sentiment uh, through Destination Canada and other data points. Um, but we do believe that the, the drive and the, I think Jeff called it the two hour sort of scope, maybe a little longer, uh, hopefully, um, will be important. Um, I think we will see that more uh, as the back half of the summer as opposed to the front because we still need some of that easing of restrictions. And I do think that will carry into the fall. Um, you know, we have been housed uh, up for quite a long time, certainly longer than anyone else have, uh, we've ever been. So I, I do believe that people want to get out. Uh, they're starting to think about it. We're seeing that in the data um, uh, from, you know, from our, our dot com uh, searches that we are seeing people are, are spending more time there. They're looking they're, they're They are starting to plan, obviously very reserved until they know more. Um, but I do think we will have will be, have at least uh, interprovincial, uh, you know, interregional travel. And then, you know, I, I can't say I, I really would like that border to open because I think that we provide an opportunity to our, our you know, to our folks in the United States uh, when the time comes and when it's safe for them to eventually come and, and visit with us again as well. Okay. Well, I think we are at our time. Uh, I'll hand it back over to Stephanie. Sylvia and I really appreciate um, you both taking your time to, to chat with us and, and to talk about some of these best practices and as we work towards kind of reopening and, and getting things into recovery mode and, and building demand back. Thank you. Big thank you to Jeff, Laura, Sylvia, and Nicole. We really appreciate your input and taking the time to produce this excellent webinar for us today. For any of the questions that we didn't get a chance to answer, we will try to get answers posted onto our website and we'll send out an e-blast notifying everybody that those are posted and up. Stay tuned, we will have another webinar brought to you by Big Picture Conferences under the Chip Digital banner within the next couple of weeks. Thanks everybody and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.